So the title for today's lesson is The Calling of the Four Fishermen. And even in that title, there's a lot of context to dig through and to bring out. We are at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, and it's time for him to gather his disciples. And our text in Matthew 4 and Mark 1 give us the story of how four of those men, Simon called Peter, Andrew, James, and John, began their walk as disciples of Jesus the rabbi. Now, just as a reminder, and something that's foundational to any Bible study, is the fact that in the Bible, words actually matter. They are vitally important, and we can easily pass over certain words or names and miss their meaning. We will see a few of those words in our passages today. So here's the basic story. Jesus is strolling along the seashore on his home turf. Galilee would be the epicenter of his ministry, and it's where he would spend most of his time in ministry and would come back to for rest. So he's walking around his arena, and as he's walking, he sees four specific individuals that he specifically calls to become his disciples. Okay, there's a lot of context here that we have to get uh, into in order for the story to come to life. First, let's take a long look at these four individuals, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Peter and Andrew were casting their nets into the sea, and James and John were with their father Zebedee mending their nets. So we know that these four individuals, they're fishermen, which was a very common trade in those days, especially being next to a very large body of water. But the question that needs to be asked is, why are they fishermen? Well, the answer is because that's their father's trade. But that's not the hope and dream of most Hebrew parents or Hebrew children. The goal for most was to become a rabbi. That was the highest position you could achieve that would bring you prosperity, it would bring you fame, and it would bring you stardom. Everybody wanted to become a rabbi. And to become a rabbi, you had to first become a disciple of that rabbi. I know in previous lessons we have gone over the process, but here's a quick refresher. Jewish boys started school at the age of five, and their days consisted of reading or being spoken to the Torah, or the first five books of the Bible. Every day you learned and memorized the text, so much so that by about the age of 12, most Jewish boys would have most of the Torah committed to memory. If you were exceptionally good at memorizing it, some maybe one out of a hundred, would then move on to secondary school. And the cream of that crop, maybe one out of a thousand, would then be selected by a rabbi to become their disciple. And the process went like this. A student would approach a rabbi and ask, can I be like you? Meaning, can I be one of your disciples? The rabbi, if he wanted to spend his time, would then test him, perhaps having him recite Deuteronomy word for word. For most, this is where the attempt would end. They might miss one word in the entire book of Deuteronomy and the rabbi would respectfully decline their offer. So while it was everyone's dream to make it, Further in school, only a small handful actually made it. The rest, well, they went back home and learned their father's trade. And this is where we are with these four individuals. You see, they didn't make it. They were not the cream of the crop that other rabbis would even want as disciples. They were just average Joes learning their father's craft. And so this leads me to the next point that a lot of times we can miss. So right now, kind of create a picture of the disciples in your head. Go ahead and make that classic picture of the 12 disciples around Jesus. What do you see? Well, for many, you see long gray beards or older gentlemen that are established members of the community. Our text here gives us vital information that talks about who these disciples really were. You see, these men, they weren't actually men at all. They were boys. The fact that James and John were with their father tells me that they were learning the craft of fishing, meaning they had just returned from school and not making it, they chose to enter into their father's business. And when, do a boy, when does boys return? Well, they return at the age of 12 or 15. We also get a bit of insight in the fact that all of them immediately left their nets and followed Jesus. Now, there are other reasons to do that, but it would also suffice to say that they were able to immediately leave because they weren't entrenched into the family business. So that mental image of a middle-aged man around Jesus might be a little distorted. Instead, picture a group of young kids, ages 12 to 15, becoming Jesus' disciples. That'd be about the correct age for boys to become a disciple. And that puts a different perspective on the situation, doesn't it? 
that puts a new connotation and meaning to the responsibility that these disciples had. It also changes the standard that we might hold uh, the youth of today as we recognize the power to change the world that they might possess. These were boys, fresh off of failure, and all of a sudden Jesus, a newly proclaimed rabbi who was pretty much growing in popularity as, as a rabbi, says, hey you, I want you to become like me. I want you to be one of my disciples. There was no test to see if you knew every word of the Bible. There was no level of stature or position. There was no background check to see if you were strong enough or worthy enough for the position. See, Jesus flipped the protocol for rabbis and sought out his disciples. And Jesus, well, he picked ordinary people who didn't have any particular skills or talents that were superhuman. And he said, with you, I want to change the world. Oh, and by the way, it's because of these ordinary 12 boys and a handful of ordinary but very powerful women that allows us to be talking and believing in Jesus right now today. And these young men, they leapt at the chance to follow a rabbi. The text says they immediately left their nets. The word immediately, it's important here. They didn't say, I'll sleep on it, or they didn't ask a series of questions uh, about job descriptions or pay scales or benefits. The text says that they immediately dropped everything to follow Jesus. Yes, the ultimate goal was to become a disciple. Yes, they probably didn't have much going for them in the first place, but think of the sacrifice and the risk that Jesus was asking them. See, Jesus wasn't an entrenched or solidified rabbi of the community, and he'd already gained a bit of controversy amongst the community. He was proclaiming for repentance, which kind of always stirs up a bit of debate. So this choice, it was a big one. It meant leaving home, family, friends, and one's community and dedicating your entire life, every bit of you, to becoming a rabbi. And these four, they didn't hesitate and immediately followed Jesus. So let's put the situation into our own shoes. You're at work or at a restaurant or living your life and someone comes up to you and says, drop everything you were doing, leave everything that you have built and produced up until now and come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men, or I'll make you disciple makers. Would you do it? Would you leave it all? What if it was Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible, the one that you might have come to know, and he walks up to you and says, calling you by name, I want you on my team. I want you to become like me. I want you to change the world for me through the calling of your talents and all your resources that I've placed upon your life. I want you to follow me. Would you cast everything aside and follow him? Whether you see it or not, that is the very call that Jesus himself is asking of each one of us today and every day. Whether you're 12, 20, 50, 80, Jesus is asking this very question of us right now. Will you forsake all and follow me and be like me? If you do, you will not just collect money or possessions or fame. If you become like me, you will collect people for the kingdom of heaven. Will there be people in heaven because of you? Will your goal today to become more and more like Jesus? Will we drop what gets in our way of following Jesus? Will to today be the day that you drop your nets of this world and become not just a believer of Jesus, but a disciple of Jesus? Will we answer the call, come, follow me.